carrying on with the dimensions, there's <coughs> a special tool called Room and Area, yep. which is able to to actually tell you more about the rooms that you have created. Now, uh -huh. what does this tool do? Well, okay, then let's just compare this uh, this room and area with the dimension tool as well. So we can, we will see the difference. So we will talk about the, the, the room and area uh, measurement, uh, how you can do that. The room and area measurement, actually there is a dimension tool which is called the area uh, dimension. And it's, uh, oh, well, it should not be here. It's in, the, uh, it's in the building and it's called area. This is, it's very simple. You just, uh, you know, either pick items and then the software will recognize the contour, or you just say, okay, it's a room, or you just free draw a, a, a polygon. Let's just start with a polygon. And for some reason, I would like to pick this area, draw it around. Well, I just keep it simple now, and I just follow this contour. Mm -hmm. And then whatever I did with this one, I actually made a mistake over there, so we will, I, I, can, I can also show you how to fix that. The software measures this. You can say, okay, enter. And, this, and then place this tag somewhere, and then the software recognizes, okay, that was the area, now we work in metric uh, system. And then when you select it, the software keeps the original counter, and then you can make fixes, move this node somewhere else, and then it will update itself. So this is how you can measure certain areas. The same tool you can use for, for, for a room as well. And is but that what you would use for measuring rooms? No, no, in case of rooms, I would use the, the tool that is called building and room and area because that is specifically tailored for that situ situation. Room and area is actually coming with several forms. That the first, which I would like to tell, talk about, is the automatic placement. Automatic placement uh, auto generates, auto recognizes, and auto generates room stamps or room, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, room information in all of the rooms with a very simple text with room and a number and then you can change the room text and let's say this is actually a bad room. Yeah, the software doesn't know by itself what the the room's actual role is, you have to name them. So but actually actually you can quite quickly you can you can you can cycle through these rooms and then you know just uh, gi yes. give them a proper name. Uh, but there is another tool which I would like to recommend and that's the room and area room by walls. Mm -hmm. A room by walls is actually doing this you just click there and then it's it's by default giving you more information that's just a setting. You can go into the settings and then then you can uh, figure out what happens. Actually, this is also something that is based on um, local standards. You can either use DIN or, or NORM 1. Uh, you can also change the, the, the limits of this room, how it's recognized. And this will actually give the, the opportunity that the software actually uh, can, can you know, extract information in Excel file and calculate the uh, the volume mm -hmm. of the room as well. If, even if it's uh, you know uh, uh, having a, a roof or something yes. with some very weird shape, it's it's calculating mm -hmm. the volume as well. Um, there are the calculated values here. And here here is where you can see the and change the room name. You can actually. Uh, set up different uh, apartment units, um, you know, group them together that this is apartment unit one, two, three, and all of them has, you know, bedroom and kitchen and uh, other things. You can set up the gross area and you can set up a different uh, area setting even the volume is uh, here now. It's, it's, it's very small simply because I did not change the upper limit and very, very well actually it's very small. Uh, so you can, I just, I just disable ev everything here and say auto recognize it. I, I don't want to care about that. Yes. I already designed it. And there is also something that's called the abbreviations, and uh, you can say, well, for example, you would like to distinguish the gross area from the other area, and so you can say, that, okay, GA, this is GA for, for gross area, and gross area, and then we can see that. Okay, ah, now so, so if I have other options enabled, which we saw before. And that's the you know the calculated values, and this is where you can enable all of these. This is how you will be able to distinguish which is which. Uh, also, uh, in the properties, you can set up oh, the, the, the text font. style, the, the 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 style itself. So you cannot uh, piece by piece set up all of the fonts uh, for or all of the settings, but you can pick up a ready-made. Uh, style that you have created before or it's shipped with the software and then you can use that. So let's change this for example to, I don't know, times uh, 500 and redraw so we have a different font style. I will just actually turn it back to something else. Can you tell us if the if this uh, room and area label has any connection to the to the room like the measurements do? 
So if you if you change the contour of the room, for instance, yes. what, what happens? Does it update automatically or asks for your permission? Yeah, this this automatically uh, updates. It will it will actually tell you that uh, the room shape has changed. Should I update mm -hmm. th these things? There are certain triggers in the software when it recognizes the changes, and then you you can say okay, update it. Uh, or, uh, but but this only happens with these uh, room uh, room stamps, room and area tools that you use by you know auto recognizing the walls. Because there is the other one, the room by Polygon, which is quite similar to this one, but in this case you can see only a, only a, a measured value, and this this actually creates the same stamp, but with a fixed area. Mm -hmm. You can use these for gardens, you know, um, garage so. ways. That's, that's and, a scenario and, where you would and other things. Yeah, them. yeah. Now, so when you would like to represent more likely something like this than just simply a value. You briefly mentioned the roof spaces and and lofts. Um, there's yep. a special scenario for them. You need to know what is the the actual amount of, of uh, living space. Yeah. And because you know in every country the, these regulations are different, meaning that. The, the amount of, of space which should be deducted is different, but uh, how do you calculate that? Let me just quickly create, I actually prepared a very simple example here, uh, which, is, which looks like this. Mm -hmm. And there is um, there's a very simple volume here. This is, is handled as one single room, but of, of course it happens if the shape is different. Yes. I just created a wall which is not larger than one meter, I, I believe, and there's, at this point it's around 2.7. And then I, I have this um, this room shape here. And then, uh, for example, here in this local area, we consider everything below 1.9 meter uh, that is not useful for uh, humans. Uh, it's you, it's okay for for storing things, but not yes. good not good uh, for something. So it that should you, be you either like deducted from your uh, gross area. Or so you should not count it as mm -hmm. the, the gross area. So so. Uh, this this is actually based on two things. One thing is the software is by default set up to use this value in the item settings, and then it's here the, the uh, minimal height belonging to the net area, and this this is it here. You can change this value wherever you wish, and then the software will calculate based on those values. And then now, as we as I have this room here. Uh, I can see two different values, and that's the reason why. I can see the, the, the original f kind of floor area, and this is the, the area that can be inhabited, count as an inhabited area. Yes. And there is this red line. So, so these settings are here. I, uh, first things first, I activated both of these, and then I went to the profile and area properties, and I just you know, made sure that it is represented red, and it's represented with this dashed line. And then it turned this into a visible clue here until when I already placed it, I used this here. It's called the uh, net area on off switch. If I mm. just disable it, I won't see even it's there. But if I go back and I say, okay, just make it visible for me and then enable it and then I can see it here.